for giving me the opportunity to look at a series that I wouldn't have even known existed unless she had given me this recommendation. Although a little outside of my viewing scope, today we're going to be looking at a made-for-Netflix Japanese live-action drama series entitled Atelier. The 13-episode series launched on Netflix this past September, then later on rebroadcasted on Japanese television. To explain the plot briefly, a mid-twenties woman named Mayuko, fresh out of college, moved to Tokyo to get a job at a place where she thinks she's going to get to work on creating new fabrics. Instead, she realizes it's a job of a completely different sort at a place called Emotion, where she will be working with unique fabrics to make beautiful, made-to-order lingerie. The series documents a year in the life of Mayuko, the head designer and manager Miss Nanjo, and the rest of the staff at Emotion, as the store and its employees struggle through various sorts of growth, change, and development and production within the lingerie and fashion industries. Actually, now that I've described the basic plot, it makes it easy to see why in Japan the series actually isn't called Atelier, but is instead called Underwear. It's a far more accurate title, and I think the series literally only uses the word atelier once in the first episode. But I suppose it's harder to market a series called Underwear to an English-speaking audience and have the audience take it seriously. And about taking this show seriously, you might think that a Japanese show entitled Underwear and involving working in the manufacturing of underwear would turn into this sort of fan service or comedy series, neither of which are actually true at all. Sure, there are occasionally comedic things that happen, and you're going to see some nearly naked runway models showing off some pretty bras and panties, but there isn't a single moment in the series where it's played up either for sexuality or comedic fan service effect. There aren't jokes about how good butts and boobs look in underwear, but there is a lot of talk about how it makes a person feel to wear something nice and unique all to themselves and about feeling comfortable and confident. Most of these actors aren't ones I'm familiar with, although after looking things up I feel like I should have been. Mirei Kiritani, who plays Mayuko, has been pretty prolific in dramas in the past and even has voiced a couple of video game characters, including Mir in Dragon Quest Heroes The World Trees Woe and The Blight Below, and Mayoi in the Japanese version of Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, and in fact also playing Mayoi in the live-action film adaptation of Ace Attorney from 2012. Mao Daichi, who plays Miss Nanjo, has not only participated in lots of different drama herself, but is also one of the long-time top-performing stars of Takarazuka, the famous all-female theater troupe that performs all kinds of amazing musical performances. But then perhaps my audience would be more familiar with some of the male performers for their appearances in other live-action hero shows, such as Dori Sakurada, who on several occasions has played common writer Nu Den O, oh, Kenji Matsuda, who's played multiple secondary common writer characters over the years, and Hisahiro Ogura, who played Shigeru Wajima in Common Writer Wizard. Though, if you're a fan of these hero shows, and that's your basis for coming into this series, you'll probably find yourself a bit surprised. This series is far more mature and pushes these actors you might be familiar with farther than you might have seen them work before. I'd been asked to talk about just how realistic this series is, especially as far as the work environment is concerned, and in regards to this taboo product of lingerie. While I can't speak from personal working experience in this sort of shop, I can say that it absolutely represents certain elements of the fashion industry with accuracy. Take, for example, the stress of setting up runway performances and trunk shows. The series accurately depicts deadlines and the absolute panic of being backstage and making sure a show appears to be going off on stage without a hitch. It definitely gets right just what it takes to get people to see your product and about how a product is marketed to people, about giving models sponsorship by simply handing them products from your company that you hope they'll wear so that they'll be seen with them, take pictures with them, and thus without spending any money you'll increase revenue as people begin to buy your product. It tells a true story about the struggles it takes to spend money to make money, to get your product published in magazines and other publications, 
And finally, it shows business from a very Japanese aspect about respect, trust, and honor, and even some parts that make sense around the world about the legality of operating a business and remaining within copyright and trying not to get sued over being too similar to another product. It is true, though, that lingerie is not yet considered to be completely common in Japan as far as being fashionable. It's slowly growing, but a lot of underwear has been designed to be functional, not to be seen. It's a topic that comes up frequently in the series, but also is described as something to give the person wearing it a particular feeling, even if nobody else can see it. In some ways, it might be difficult to look at this series, especially from episode 1, and not immediately compare it to the film The Devil Wears Prada, in which a young woman becomes an assistant at a super popular fashion magazine and then slowly changes her appearance and her lifestyle in order to fit in at her job and please her boss. Absolutely, the first episode nearly perfectly imitates the early portion of that film. When Mayuko shows up to work at Emotion, she looks far too business and not nearly fashionable enough, and she has no clue what it means to be fashionable at all, which simply pisses off her boss, Miss Nanjo. So you don't read Runway? Uh, no. And before today, you had never heard of me? No. And you have no style or sense of fashion? Well, um, I think that depends on what you're... No, no. That wasn't a question. でも残念。ダサい。え?ピッチピチでツルツルでものもよく知ってるけど、やっぱダサい。致命的にダサい。but while The Devil Wears Prada depicts truly deplorable human beings getting progressively worse over time, the staff at Emotion in Atelier are never truly terrible people, and in fact, over time, we can see them find flaws within themselves and grow as human beings. Even the super strict Miss Nanjo seems to begin to find that her definition of beauty is not absolute, and we watch her grow some humanity, while we also watch Mayuko learn the tricks of the business but never sacrifice the good qualities within herself. And while The Devil Wears Prada has a huge illustrious makeover sequence to show, hey, she's made it in the job and she's somebody to be envied, Mayuko also begins to dress nicer after a few episodes of the series, but it's never made into a big presentation, rather done just sort of quietly in the background. And really, she starts to dress cuter, but it's nothing like the runway fashion presented in The Devil Wears Prada. And before you know it, these two titles couldn't have possibly turned out any more different. This is true even in the areas of personal lives and romance. Though the main character in Devil Wears Prada is already in a relationship when the movie starts, while Mayuko is single throughout the series. The relationship in The Devil Wears Prada crumbles, whereas Mayuko is just trying to figure out what it is she wants the entire time, even as options for romance begin to sprout in front of her. The choices between romance and work come up between both of these properties, but they're handled in two completely different ways, and I find the situations in Atelier to be far more believable. And although I perhaps have made this sound like an overly heavy and serious series, as I said earlier, there are amusing things that happen from time to time in almost every episode, and with this comic relief, you don't find yourself completely overburdened with drama. Overall, it really is a pretty pleasant series. There were only a few things that I didn't like about the series, but none of them were big enough for me not to recommend this series to you. For one, there's that opening and closing theme song. It's all about you! No, I guess I just found the song to be way too kitschy, and after a while it started grating on me. But you won't hear it all throughout the show as action is happening, so you can ignore it for a few seconds. 
the middle of the series has a transition from one small business problem to another small business problem, and in that process, it sort of felt like, for maybe just part of one episode, that they weren't sure of what to do between Mayuko and her co-worker Kaji, and it paints Kaji as a creep for a little while, before they finally fix him. <laughs> Whereas, furthermore, perhaps it's just a cultural difference, but Miss Nanjo has some personal life issues from her past crop up near the end of the series, and the way she chooses to handle it makes me sort of picture her as a less than great person. But then they also don't give us all of the possible information on her personal life, so it's hard to make a fully good judgment on her character throughout the couple of episodes where her personal life catches up with her. But past that, as a businesswoman, at least we do get to see her grow and change her viewpoint on both business and beauty. I know that in the end, perhaps not a lot of people are going to be watching this video because this isn't something that a lot of people would expect me to talk about and maybe most of my audience has never even heard of this title. But I think that if you're a fan of Japanese media, it would be worth it to give Atelier a chance if you have access to Netflix. It's well written and well shot with tons of real media brands and designs by an instructor at Japan's Bantan Design Institute. It shows an interesting mix of culture culture and humanity while struggling to keep up with a hectic portion of the fashion industry and at the same time trying to remain true to oneself when you don't necessarily feel like you're an incredibly fashionable type of person. In that sense, I was able to see a bit of myself in Mayuko. Japan has somewhat gotten on the bandwagon with Netflix as of late and has been creating a lot of new drama specifically for the video platform. It would be nice if America's Netflix could begin subtitling and localizing some more of these drama series because Adelier got me interested in seeing what else was available. Thanks again to Stacy for the recommendation and I'm looking forward to working on the next request review.